Hi, I'm Old Sneelock. Welcome to another episode of Old Sneelock's Workshop. What I have here is the axle out of the John Deere tractor that I'm going to give to Oliver. Well, he's going to have it here to ride on. It's not going to go to his house. It's going to stay here at Grandma and Grandpa's house. And he'll get to come here and ride on it. Yeah, I know, it's coercion, but it's what grandparents do the world over. The problem I'm running into, it was designed with this little push washer on it. And the push washer is supposed to uh, hold the wheel on. They would slide this axle through the body of the tractor, slip the wheel over the top of this, stake one of these washers on there, then flip it around and do the same thing on this end. And I can see the mark where the washer set there. A little ring right there on the steel. Well, the problem I'm running into, this washer snapped in half, just split open. So the wheel fell off. And I'm pretty sure that's why I got set out by the curb, because they looked at it and said, well, I can't fix that. So now we come to the old Sneelock portion of the operation. I'm going to fix it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to drill and tap this for a quarter 20 bolt on both ends. I'm going to knock this washer off because it's unreliable. This, this is not a good design feature. What I'm doing costs more. It involves setting up a machine and drilling and facing off the end, drilling, tapping, and then putting a screw, which is much more expensive than a snap washer, a screw and a washer over the end of it. And that will hold the wheel in position so it's engaged with the, the drive cogs on the motor. So. That's what I'm going to do tonight. First I have to knock off this little washer, which is not hard to do. Just like that. And then I'm going to face this in. I'm going to drill a 13 16 hole in the end of it. Why 13 16 Well, that's the tap drill size, the nominal tap drill size for a quarter 20 thread. You can use a letter drill and get more precise, but considering what we're doing, I will have an 80%, 70 to 80% thread, which is more than enough engagement. And so, that will perform all the functions that I need to have it do. Now, I have the part monitored in the chuck. I'll plug in the lathe. Then I still haven't changed that motor. Why did I go through all that malarkey? Because 
I don't want to have that little tip on the end there that makes the drill bit wander off center. So now I slip the drill chuck into the tailstock. Put in the center drill. Okay, now I have the pilot hole drilled. I need to drill a hole about that deep because I want to have the tip of this tap where the threads are. I want to have the head of this bolt set up so that I can drill and tap this.
Now to finish doing the tapping, I'm going to set the axle in the vise. Make sure the camera's on. Put a little anchor lube in the hole. This stuff is great for tapping. All-purpose metal working compound. Anchor Chemical Company. Now you have to be real careful when you're running a tap like this. It's easy to overload the tap. Not radially. Cranking it down like this, you're going to have a hard time breaking it. Putting any side load on it, all of a sudden, all bets are off. Now we're starting to push enough junk in front of it that it's packing the hole full. See how far down we got. If we're far enough for that bolt to go down the seat, I'm good enough, I can stop. Of course I can always cut the bolt off because I don't need to have it this long. Looks like I gotta go a little further. It's okay, easy enough to do. One thing, when you're using this stuff, make sure you put the little red cap back on. It disappears on the bench and then you're left without a cap or else you're chasing around trying to find one. Looks like I'm going to end up cutting that bolt off a little bit. Not a problem. Wasn't really enamored with the idea of using that bolt anyways. I could use a little longer bolt with less plating on it and have better luck with the tightening of it. Anchor lube. Wipe off the chips. Start the tap. Starting the tap in the lathe means that it's a lot easier to start the tap. It's, it's going to go in straight. And I'm just taking advantage of the operation that I have. I could drill this by hand a lot harder. I could drill it by hand with a hand drill. But why do something like that if you don't need to? I have a lathe, I use it.
You can do this on a drill press too. If you have enough oomph in your drill press to run the tap, you can chuck the tap up in the chuck, leave it a little loose. You want to have the tap spin before it snaps off because power tools can over torque them. By hand, you're going to feel it long before you over torque it. It's because it's going to stop moving. Yep, I'm going to stop a little short of being all the way down. That's okay. Get a different bolt and cut the bolt shorter. Now why do I put a rag under there? Because the bolt is hot. I just spent a lot of effort and energy rubbing a piece of steel across it and the resulting friction makes it warm up. I'm going to grip this one a little lower. Try this again. Well, I missed my fingers. That's always good. Grip the nut in there and spin the bolt out of it, and that cleans up the threads. There we go. Grab the bolt and the pliers, vice grips. Kind of cool little vice grips. Model 7. Leverage Tools Incorporated. It's an automatically adjustable vice grip. You just set how much pressure you want and then you can clamp it on large items or small items, the jaws come up, touch, and as soon as the friction occurs in here, it starts latching it down. <laughs>
There we go. I'm down in the basement. I want to modify the axle on the John Deere tractor so that the wheels will stay on. Well, I've got the bolts in it. Both ends. Now we got this job done. In the morning, we'll go out and mount the wheels. If you have any suggestions for a new video, questions about today's video, or any of the other videos on the channel, just drop a note in the comments. You know I read them all. Thanks for watching. This video is not to be viewed by anyone under the age of 13 in the U.S. or 16 in the European Union without the express written permission of the parents or the legal guardians of the underage person. Such written permission must be on file at the local government entity in charge of enforcing the rules and regulations established by the FTC. Anyone violating these terms is admitting by default that they hold harmless the owners and operators of this channel. Any and all questions should be addressed to your local branch of the FTC.